few moments as it comes up to Culpin and Culpin marks in defence. It's 26 minutes into the last quarter and there's no hope for Oak. For Rad, the victors, I would say now, for 1973, have well deserved the way they've played their three matches in the final series. First of all, they knocked off Port Melbourne. Then, uh, last week, they annihilated Dandenong and they've done a similar thing to Oakley today. A great comeback by Perrin. And a lot of credit must go to their coach in Kevin Rose as it came down towards Taylor as Smith trying to get through. And this is Rose's last year as coach, uh, Ted. Now Fryer's kicked it up towards the uh, centre. That was his first kick. There's Carr put it into the hands of uh, Keneally. But O'Kane takes it away from him, goes for the long kick down field and will bounce through for another one to Oakley. And they move on to 76 points with Peran on 113. Well, Danny O'Kane kicking that uh, goal. Here's a play I thought should have been brought onto the ground well before half-time. Oakley had many players down on form here today, and uh, O'Kane plays a similar type of game to what these Peran players do. And back here, the umpire, Brian Sterling, goes for the bounce again. Pushed down to the ground from the front by Quinn, and Emsel gets the free. Well, we're up to 189 points. And the nearest to that in our Pick the Points competition is 210 at the moment by uh, Miss Jay Jennings of Heaven Road Dandenong. She went for the lowest number. She has it all her way at the moment because there'd only be four or five minutes of play left. There's the kick up towards the centre half forward position. It comes through towards Stevens. Stevens has done his bit for Oakley today in defence. He's kicked it off out towards the wing here on the stand side of the ground. Kicks it further around the field. He's going to try and keep it in play. But there's no, there's been a push in the back, I'd say, to Culpin. This is why, or, is the umpire No, he signalled it, it out of bounds. Well, that ball was it. a foot inside the line. I think our cameras were following it uh, pretty clearly around the ground. It wasn't out. But he's given it out, but it doesn't matter that much now, Ted. Not really, <laughs> Phil. Not as far as the result is concerned. Quinn tried to palm it down to Robbins. Robbins uh, got it across here uh, towards Forster, but uh, Quinn now towards Cloak. Cloak up towards the forward zone. A battle going on, Keneally coming in, but uh, coming out as Peruit, he couldn't get the kick in. There's Keneally trying to come through. And holding the ball, says the umpire, and the free kick will be taken by O'Kane of Oakley. He's livened things up a bit since he came on. He's gone for the short pass, gets it across towards Ford, but Ford couldn't get in there. O'Brien is the player. Trying to get away with it. O'Brien scoops it off the ground. Been difficult to select the best player for the pair of Creamer football boots, Ted. It's been a difficult job, Phil, but I finally come up. There's about 10 players I could select, but I've gone for Peter Sinclair for his consistency and his drive all day long. He's gone out of the game a bit now in this final quarter, but he's been a tremendous player for Perrin. There's Weeks getting the knockout from the ruck. It comes down towards Keneally. Ford is chipping in there. Ford trying to pick the ball up. Couldn't do so. Scoops it off the ground towards Robbins. Robbins couldn't get away. And there's a tired lot of players out there at the present time. Oakley would feel a little the worse for wear because they're the side that's down. And the public congregating around the race here. They're on the ground everywhere as we have a shot for goal. And it'll be touched through by gun to take... 77 with Peran on 15, 20, 13. Only a few seconds left in this game now with uh, Peran 113 points uh, to Oakley 77. And uh, no doubt Peran will have big celebrations tonight. And uh, as Phil said, the crowd is on the, over the uh, fence now waiting to go out uh, to congratulate these Peran players on a magnificent performance here today in the 1973 Grand Final. Right from the public, halfway through the first quarter, they look the winners. Back it comes once again, and there'll be a replay of the second half of this game on Channel O tonight, immediately after our main movie, as Carr is trying to get through. He can't get away with the ball at all and dribbles it over the line. But also Caulfield Football Club, Phil, will be having a replay of the grand final too in their vict uh, victory this year, and that will be at the Caulfield Town Hall on the 1st of October. A grand final replay of the Caulfield Premiership win. Right, Ted. Now here's a kick about to be taken out here by David Wendt. David Wen within scoring range. He's kicked a point in the game to date, and he's kicked a second point now. And that takes Oakley to 10, 18, 78 to Perrin's 15, 23, 113. 31 minutes have played into the last quarter, and many people leaving the ground at this stage. 
Although on the outer there, you'll see them in the background. Uh, there's quite a few staying to see it out. As Robbins now gets around, uh, or tried to get around his opponents, holds the ball. The umpire called play on as it comes through to Ford. Ford up towards the pocket position. Off their hands down there to Gunn. Gunn passes out to Culpin. And Culpin now will clear it onto the half-back line with Emsel racing across here. What a magnificent final series this player has had. He plays it to the wing on the stand side of the ground. And there it will be forced over the line and the throw in. And you can see the pack of uh, people down here. The crowd over the fence, all crowded around the boundary line. And that's it. And so the final scores. Horan, 15-23. Total of 113 to Oakley's 10-18. And that is a total of 78. OK, we're in the Ferran rooms at the moment. Charles Lux just moving over, congratulating Peter Sinclair there. I'm going to get Kevin Rose over. I know he'll probably want to say hello to his players. Laurie Rippon just coming through. And it's a pretty tired Laurie Rippon too, being congratulated by the Ferran side here. And the players having a bit of trouble getting in the race because of the number of people that have uh, congregated there. Wright, Jim Wright coming in. And uh, we're still waiting for all the players to move in. I'll have Kevin Rose over just as soon as we can get near him. But uh, Kevin's wanting to uh, welcome the players as they come through the race. And uh, they're trying to keep the uh, public back at the moment. They are and doing it quite effectively to let these players through. But it's a bit of a uh, mix up there in the race. President of the VFA with me here too, uh, Alec Gillen. A great win, Alec. Great yes, great yes, final. yes. The best side in the day. An excellent climax to a season, yes. OK. Players still making their way through too. Big uh, big weeks. We played a great game. O'Brien, Steve O'Brien. Brian Keneally, who I mentioned, uh, has kept his grand final record intact. Brian, Brian, congratulations, you kept that grand final record intact. Uh, yes. nice to, I believe you get to play in a losing grand final side. Uh, I'm only going over well now. <laughs> you might be retiring. Here's the club song. Seen all the OK, well, Kevin wants to see all the players there. Uh, as we mentioned, he'd want to move around them, and he's still congratulating them all. We'll have him over in just a moment. We'll be talking with Ken Emsall, and it's a very excited uh, Paran side here. I think it's just thinking through that they've finally won it. One little fella that played a great game. Rod, Rod Hamilton, congratulations. How's it feel to win? Oh, well, you had it one out there pretty early. It was a great first half, and that's what won it for you. Good on you, Rod. You're staying with, uh, you're staying with Paran. Good on you. Congratulations. Great game. Jack Morgan's here. Bert Shelton. Good win, Jack. Bert, congratulations. Thanks, Boiler. OK, we'll go through the song again. over to us now. Kevin, congratulations. All the critics went against you. You told us Thursday night you'd win and you won well. Yes, it was tremendous. Peter. Well, you yourself, you had to be talked into coaching the side this year. You had to win the last game to make the four and I believe you're the first side to win the grand final from fourth place since first and second division has been in. Oh, a well, big it's, record. Well, it's good. But, uh, you know, I must be a fool. In brothers, because they were superb, you know, that without players, you haven't got a chance. At no stage uh, in the latter half of the year did they relent, you know. The players were absolutely tremendous, you know. Just couldn't say enough for them. There must have been times during the season you were wondering whether you were going to make the four or not. Yes, yes, it was a bit of doubt for a while, but uh, when we got going, when we settled into a pattern of play, there was no doubt that we were going to get in and we were going to do well. 
right. Thanks very much. For your your and thanks very much for your support during the year. Thank you. Okay, Alec Gillan, the president of the BFA, about to address the Paran side. We have some quiet. Thank you for Councillor Alec Gillan. Quiet, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, supporters, I, I won't hold you up because I know this is so important that you claim as my purpose in uh, being at the moment addressing you is to congratulate you. You're the best side on the day. You came from the, you came from the fourth, you came from the fourth position of first, which is a wonderful performance. Congratulations. Ken Emsel, if I can get up, I'm trying to get Ken Emsel to come forward. It's a pretty tired Ken Emsel too. Ken, congratulations, a great game on your part. You must have been very proud of the boys today. again. Everyone fired again. Well, they really turned it on. Three weeks in a row. I know you were confident, Ken, when we talked to you. We said you were going to find it hard, but you were confident you could win. Well, we've been confident right from the start of the year that if we can get into the finals on the, on the, in the good conditions and on the dry, hard grounds, we had the players to, uh, to fire under those conditions. You certainly did. Ken, what are your own plans for next year? Oh, I haven't got a clue. You know, I, just, I won't think about it for another couple of months. Ken Emsel, Captain of Moran, congratulations.